Okay, awesome. All right, and then I think um, we're we're at close to 15 minutes in, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move forward and get started. Um, I just wanted to, to thank everybody for being able to, to come and be here today. Uh, thank you, Carmen, for, for posting that in. So we have a list of the different speakers that Carmen just added into um, the uh, chat box there. Um, again, as, as many of you know, this is gonna be one of our uh, first announcements uh, from the state of Oregon about the um, full re restored COFA um, uh, benefits uh, for Medicaid. Uh, uh, and so we are working in conjunction with CAN and OMCA okay. for this particular presentation. Hey, Teresa, I'm on this meeting now. I'm gonna go give the phone to dad if you wanna talk to him. Oh, Teresa, would you mind muting yourself? So anybody, if you're not currently speaking, if you're able to mute yourself, that will uh, be perfect. Awesome, thank you. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next uh, uh, spot here. Um, again, we we thank you for being here. Um, we're going to have get through try and get through a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, we're going to have various speakers, so they're going to go ahead and announce themselves as we're going through. Um, and I'll try and act as an MC and help guide us uh, through and make sure that we're staying um, as close on time as we can. Um, and I've got a lot of other teammates here to help with that process as well. Um, I want to acknowledge um, that, you know, this event here is for community and for folks to listen and learn and see what steps they need to take or, or learn about um, what benefits they may have access to in regards to, um, to Medicaid. So hopefully we'll help to answer some of those questions today and then um, work on building what our next outreach plan is going to look like for the community um, going forward and uh, learn from, from you guys as well and get input. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, transition um, Antonio um, to do our um, uh, go over who's um, all here. Today. Can you please can you please mute your phones? Um, um, I'm hearing background noise. So thank you and, and welcome. I, I would say um, buenas tardes. Uh, good afternoon. Um, we're we're we are happy to do this presentation. Um, it's, it wouldn't be possible, but there's a couple partners that, that are here with us um, that, that are doing this presentation. So I wanna go ahead and acknowledge them and apologize ahead of time if I butcher these names. So I'm apologizing ahead of time. So from CAN, uh, we got Tyna um, M, Kara Miller, and Joe Enlet, um, Oregon Marshallese Community Association. We got Jess Gasper, Lowell Alik and Anton Antonio E. Uh, from Oregon Health Authority, Sean Snyder, Monica Juarez, Oregon Department of Human Services, myself, Antonio, oh, me. Um, the marketplace is Nina Rempel. Um, just to let you all know, we do have some ODH, uh, Oregon Department of Human Services and Oregon Health Authority leadership here. They're here to listen to your voice and what you have to say. Um, they're, they're, um, they will have very little um, uh, place in, in the presentation, but they're here to listen. So thank you and welcome all um, to um, this meeting presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Antonio. And I'm gonna pass things on to, uh, on to Monica um, Juarez for my team um, that's gonna talk about the agenda and what our hopes are to, um, to go over today. Thank you, Sean. I first, um, you know, hello, and and I wanted to just walk you to the agenda. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna talk about today? So we're gonna talk about the COFA yeah. community diversity and history and experience yeah. for some of you. Yes, <laughs> Looks like there's some background noise, yeah, yeah. but um, just to learn more, a little more of the COFA community um, in restoring OHB Medicaid benefits for COFA citizens, which is what we're gonna talk about today. And, and, and then why now and, and when will be uh, available and what's the application process. And then we're also going to have uh, Naina talk about the COFA Premium Assistance Program and how is that going to roll out as well. And then go to your questions and answers. And, and also we're going to have an opportunity to, um, to, you know, let us know about the outreach and then any discussions. If you have any questions like Antonio mentioned, please put them on the chat box and we'll do our best to answer those questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Monica. Um, again, you know, we just want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, and I want to, 
um, recognize uh, that you know we do have a, a, a varying group. Uh, we have community members, we have representatives of the Gofa community, um, we have organizations, we have uh, OHA and ODHS leadership. So part of the presentation that we're going to have today is we wanted to talk about um, the Kofa Compact and the nations that are within Kofa. Um, it is, you know, a so much culture, um, languages that are within the community. We've got the Federated State of Micronesia, Republic of uh, the Marshall Islands, and the Republic of Palau. So it encompasses a lot of community and encompasses um, just a breadth of history and experience. So we do we did want to have a spot and a place for a, a few organizations to be able to talk about the history and talk about their organizations and talk about hopefully what we're uh, going to be doing moving forward. Um, so I am going to pass things off to um, Tiana, who's going to do an introduction from CAN uh, and do a presentation and talk about uh, COFA's history and a little bit about CAN's organization as well. Thank you, John. Hi, everyone. My name is Tiana Mushashik Nanfe. I am speaking on behalf of CAN today. I am a board member for CAN and also the president for the Eastern Oregon CAN chapter. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank OHA, the Oregon Health Authority, for partnering with us on this and allowing us to speak today. Um, a shout out to the Oregon Department of Human Services, um, our Consul General Joe Enlin, I believe he is here, the FSM Consul General, um, former RMI Minister Antonio Eliu, who will be speaking later, um, Jess Gasper, Executive Director for OMC, and then we also have Kara Miller, the Executive Director for CAN, and our other board members. Um, thank you everyone for being here. I don't want to take up too much time, but I do think it's important to preface today's discussion with some of the history and background of the Kofa Nations, particularly our presence in the U.S. Um, I know that we have some participants who are not familiar with the history of Kofa, so I just want to do a brief overview of it. So diving right in, the U.S. entered compacts with the Federated States of Micronesia, the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and Republic of Palau in 1986 and 1994, with the current compact expiring in 2023. And although the current compact expires in 2023, the U.S. military has secured continued presence on and use of these islands until 2066. The three independent Kofa nations allow the U.S. military to occupy our land, air, and sea in exchange for security and long-term restitution for health and environmental damages, as well as free entry to the U.S. to access employment, health care, and education. With the compact, we recognize the unique relationship and status that we have with the United States. The Federated States of Micronesia, the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and Republic of Palau are the only countries in the world that have this type of relationship and political agreement with the U.S. Um, we see that folks tend to lump all Pacific Islanders or immigrant communities into the same immigration status, but it is extremely important to make that differentiation and educate others about what COFA is and why we are here in the United States. Much different from other immigrant groups, we see that COFA citizens have a legal right to the United States is There is a long and complicated nuclear history and legacy in the RMI. Beginning shortly after World War II, there were over 70 different nuclear operations that were tested throughout the RMI. Operation Bravo was larger and more devastating than any other nuclear testing in the U.S. history. And it was equivalent to the bombing of Hiroshima happening every day for 40 days. And that in turn forced displacement on many families and caused extensive environmental damage and health problems for the people of RMI. Um, the beginning of March, we will also be honoring a nuclear legacy for the people of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. So keep an eye out for information on that and events that will be happening in your area. Um, the next point is the compact is a legally binding agreement. It allows for COFA citizens to freely live and work in the U.S., including access to education and health care. However, we know that these promises the U.S. made were not always honored 
and there have been many hurdles that the COFA communities across the country face every day. Another key thing to note would be that COFA citizens serve in the U.S. military at the highest rates per capita. Even though COFA citizens freely give up their lives serving in the U.S. military at higher rates than U.S. citizens, even our veterans haven't been able to access Medicaid for all these years. And you're probably wondering at this point how that ever could have been possible. Then we see in 1996, due to a federal oversight in an act called the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Act under the Clinton administration, we were then left out on um, provisions such as Medicaid. COFA leaders and advocates across the US as well as back in the islands have been lobbying for this to be corrected at the federal level ever since. And they've been working over the last 25 years through 19 different bills that were introduced at the federal level trying to reinstate Medicaid. Um, and it was only at the end of last year that we were finally able to do that. Uh, we see that the COFA Alliance National Network, also known as CAN, led that lobbying effort in the state of Oregon to correct this issue at the state level. And we see that the population of COFA Islanders in the state of Oregon has increased by over 300% in the last decade. Our COFA communities live all over the state of Oregon with long standing presence in places like Salem and La Grande over in Eastern Oregon. Um, in the Salem Kaiser School District alone, Marshallese is the third most commonly spoken language. Um, yes, thank you for that note, Sean. I'll slow down. No worries, you're doing great. I'll give them a couple seconds to catch up. In 2015, CAN worked with Oregon legislators to pass House Bill 2522 with complete bipartisan support. And this bill created the COFA Premium Assistance Program to ensure COFA Islanders had the same access to healthcare as US citizens residing in the state of Oregon. And it was really because of COFA citizens' inability to access healthcare in the state of Oregon that inspired the formation of CAN. And for the last seven years, CAN has worked hard to exemplify what we like to call the CAN way, which values relationships and inclusion above all else, building relationships with our state legislators and leaders, educating them about COFA through singing and storytelling and compelling testimonies. Over the last few years, CAN has worked closely with Senator Wyden and other state and national leaders over the years who were pivotal in the long overdue reinstatement of Medicaid. And it is only through these longstanding efforts and relationships that CAN has been able to pass six laws in the state of Oregon, each with complete bipartisan support, correcting these kind of inequ inequities, excuse me, for COFA citizens in Oregon. CAN is the only COFA organization in the state of Oregon who has successfully introduced and passed bills that improve the quality of life and overall equity for COFA citizens. That is all I have and I hope that helps with um, some of the background and history of COFA nations. If anyone has questions, feel free to put it in the chat, but I will let us move on at this point. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiana. And again, uh, thank you for um, being able to provide a little bit of context and background. Um, you know, uh, there are a lot of organizations that have been very involved in that process, and I know CAN has been a huge piece of that, especially here in Oregon. So um, thank you for providing that, con that context, because it means a lot in, in helping us understand why we're here today and why this change is so momentous for the community. Um, okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to um, Jess Gasper over at um, OMCA. Um, just um, why don't you go ahead and um, uh, and talk. All right. Well, thank you, Sean. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to give a, a big shout out and a big kamol tada to Ken uh, for all their hard work on the restoration of Medicaid. The whole COFA community owes a great debt of gratitude for all the hard work that you guys have done. And uh, we truly do appreciate it from the you know bottoms, uh, the deepest depths in the oceans of the Pacific Ocean. So. Uh, shout out to you guys for all the hard work. Uh, Yaque and greetings, everyone. 
Uh, first, I would like to thank our Heavenly Father for this great opportunity and this monumental program that's about to take place. I want to thank and acknowledge Oregon Health Authority, uh, DHS, Ken, and many hardworking people behind the scenes, just like, you know, Sean Snyder, uh, who is able to pull this off in such a short time. Uh, <clears throat> last but not least, I want to thank everyone for, you know, joining us tonight and hearing our call. Uh, to learn about, you know, you restore the restoration of Medicaid, you know, and, and this important event. My name is Jesse Gasper. I have the uh, honor and privilege of serving as the president and executive director of Oregon Marshallese Community Association, or OMCA for short. OMCA is one of the organizations that will assist our community in the enrolling uh, into uh, Medicaid. Uh, today, I am joined by um, our COVID-19 program manager, Lowell Alik, and former RMI minister, Senator Antonio Elio. He's also with us today, and he'll be speaking after myself. The Oregon March Police Community Association, OMCA, is a nonprofit, 501c3 registered public charity and community advocacy organization for the citizens uh, from the Republic of the Marshall Islands and their descendants residing here in the state of Oregon. Our mission is to assist our community in terms of education, health, and social services, and to promote our cultural values, traditions, and the history of the Marshall Islands. You know, one of those history, um, the, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the girl was talking about, you know, the, the, the bombings on, on Bikini Atoll and, and the Bravo shot. I am a uh, direct descendant of those that were deeply affected by the nuclear uh, fallout in the Marshall Islands. So the history is, is something that we advocate and we try to educate our communities, you know, here in the state about. So thank you also for bringing that up. We really do appreciate that. Currently, um, the Pacific Island, in the Pacific Islander community, of whom the Marshallese are the largest group in the Willamette Valley, we have a high rate of COVID-19 infection, long-term health issues such as diabetes, um, thyroid cancer, are very common in the Marshallese community. So, you know, this, this bill, you know, this Medicaid, you know, restoration is definitely gonna be a big impact on, on our community. And currently the Marshallese people have been focusing on, you know, trying to weather the COVID-19 crisis, paying bills, keeping the heat, you know, heat on and, and the lights on and caring for the sick and the elderly. Having eligibility for Medicaid, again, is a huge win for our community, financially, physically, even mentally, you know, some of these people are going to bed, um, you know, stressing about, you know, bills of their, you know, uh, health insurance and things like that. So this is going to be a huge, you know, uh, weight that's, you know, taken off their shoulders. And the goals of the OMCA, goals of OMCA are to support the Marshallese community in Oregon and to protect the Marshallese culture and heritage. And what does that look like? It means figuring out what the community's needs are and also building on our strengths. It means asking questions like this. What skills are needed in our community? How can we support individuals in finding and getting, getting the training that they need? Or like this, which credentials are of high value? Which ones are stackable? And in terms of health, having forums and community discussions like we have right now and bringing the leaders in health um, and leaders in our community so that we can have open dialogue to address our community's health concerns. And today, I mean, we are all witnessing, you know, something that's about to take place. So thank you all for, for joining us and thank you OHA and DHS for putting this all together. I wanna to pass it along to uh, uh, Senator uh, Antonio Elio. He'll take it from there. Perfect, thank you. And, and I just wanna mention before we pass on, uh, just um, to, if we can remember to talk a little bit uh, slower for the interpreters. Um, again, you know, if, if we, um, are, uh, the interpreters are unable to um, catch everything today. I do apologize for folks. Um, and what we're gonna hopefully be able to do is um, have this presentation available, um, translated as well um, later on for the community. All right, sorry for the interruption, yes. Thank you, Sean. All right, Antonio, and um, uh, feel free whenever you are ready. Also, I'm sure I'm 
Mr. Alu, can we um, have you speak um, into the phone? Um, people are having trouble hearing you. I apologize for interrupting you, but um, we want to make sure um, we, we hear your message. If you can please speak a little louder um, and maybe get closer to the phone. Thank you. Well, let me start again. We were chino in chino. Yoga Hollip. Is I not so you with you? All that you ran Kamolo, Chemerila. Can Ian cook the way in our rich if and run? Another and praise and cash for one. It and which one, oh, it lay a lot of Kagabi Lilux at Kagabi Lilux than. OMCA. Eleva Kamolol Imri Marlock Nanaruj Armijin Majo Puk Lane Chibang Queen Igitian Programming Medicaid Programming Agitian Medicaid Programming. It Kamolol Puchun Yan Ulevile. In Aruj Armijin Major, a Magutong and Chigain, eating an Aruj two chicken Tagadogo Ramala, chicken Tagadogo Chalagon air, in four Rilu one air, and Lulu Jagay Edmur Gainar. Another Milele, when Nang and Mijigain are Armijin Major, our Chabar can come in Milugo Ragar Common. Seven Eman go at what? Ademan go and row for a one, project for a one, for the good of mankind. Soon in Pumudan Eman, could you read all the prima long money? If you change Chibang, can program you. If you read young, when a night in in roll, come in chapter. A common book is a Konami in Dolor Jagge for common enroll below program in Medigate. Elitata Igran, the Alacuna, Nan in Kamolo, Nanipen, Ken, Kencho or Armerman Kamane, and Kogo by Kiju, Kuju in Merman, Trianglo, Chibanka in May, Prabojang and Kiju Yilo, Kiju and Peregrin Chesperi, Luchigan. Kamolo Lalotata, Yilak, a Kobala Gupen. Uh, praise and cash for and come over uh, OHA can uh, program in May. It's a magazine look in Lavanti Bank, Chilugan Perrin, and Romaja below working in Javoya Kia and I wrote Charbali Pendron. Many in what? Concani in a morning. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, translator got all that and we're able to translate it into English and, and whatnot. Um, hopefully on the recordings, uh, we can get that to uh, go through. Is that okay, Sean? Sure, absolutely. Um, and I appreciate um, you, just you being here and, and Antonio, if you'd be able to, um, to um, provide a message to the community and a private message to the Marshallese community is extremely important. I know our audio doesn't always work the way that we want it to, so I appreciate you being flexible. Um, and I, I thank you again for being here. Um, it's really an honor to have uh, representatives from the community um, like yourself uh, and such wonderful organizations like um, uh, CAN and OMCA here to, to help represent. I know it's, there are other organizations out there and we'll, we'll name a few as well later on, but um, again, we really, really thank you and hopefully we'll be able to uh, um, work on the translation pieces uh, in the future. Um, so thank you, Jess, thanks so much. Um, let's see, I just want to see just okay, perfect. Um, so again, uh, thank you everybody. That was really our opportunity to provide a little bit of background, a little bit of context 
um, to have a chance for organizations to speak about the work that they've done in the community. Um, and now it's gonna, we're gonna transition to um, our uh, portions um, from, the, uh, uh, from the Oregon Health Authority side to help explain, depending on where people may fall um, and uh, what grouping they may be in, uh, what steps you might need to take or how we can provide and help provide support. Um, so I'm gonna pass um, stuff actually on to my colleague, Monica, to help take on the next, uh, next slide. So um, thanks so much, Monica. Yeah, thank you, Sean. And thank you, uh, uh, Tiana and Jess and Mr. Elliot for, for providing us the background and history of COFA. And, you know, you, the access for healthcare benefits, uh, not having it for 25 years, it's definitely something that, um, you know, should not happen. Um, your community deserves all the healthcare um, needed just here in Oregon and, you know, throughout the U.S. And, and we want to take a moment to recognize the years of advocacy and hard work that the COFA community and allies have done to restore Medicaid benefits and to bring us where we are today. So thank you, thank you for that. And, and so, as you know, mentioned, um, now we have, um, you know, as of December 28th, 2020, um, the federal law was passed to restore full Medicaid access uh, to COFA, COFA adults. So that means the Oregon Health Plan benefits, uh, full Medicaid, which is, um, um, you know, OHP, also known as OHP. Um, you know, short for OHP, and the, and also Medicare um, savings programs and long-term care services for 65 and older and people with disabilities, which we're gonna explain with more details in a little bit, not to fall in the whole content, and and so this will these changes will take effect March uh, 10th of 2021, and there will be some uh, internal. Uh, processing on in our, in our system, but we will talk about with more detail. Just wanted to mention that. And some of the benefits that OHP covers, it will be basically medic, medical, and that, that includes uh, checkups and shots, uh, urgent care, hospital stays, and for vision care, that's for children and people uh, to 21 and also pregnant women. And also dental benefits is very, very important um, to know all this what the, this is a very comprehensive um, package. It's just very basic. You will receive more information once, you know, we, we get into um, benefits. Oh, second, my phone is going on. So also cleaning, filling, and extractions, and also transportation. It's also covered, uh, which means uh, you will get a, um, rights to your medical appointments. And that needs to be obviously a schedule with two days in advance prefer and as mental health as well and also very important uh, interpretation services is also available and you know it's also um, and you you provider and your clinics uh, should be able to provide that language needs thanks so much Monica <laughs> I appreciate it yeah I, I mean our, our our hope really today is um, just to to um, remind folks because I know it's, it has been a while since people have been able to um, ad COFA adults to be able to access um, full organ health plan benefits for you to know some, just some of the brief things that you have access to and well, how we want to help you to access those those benefits. So um, again, we'll, we'll have this presentation available for folks at a later date, as well as we're hoping to have more um, community outreach events as well uh, in the coming future. And I do see some really wonderful um, questions coming through. Um, and so we will uh, definitely remind, um, thank you for um, Tomoyo for uh, mentioning that, yes, um, along with the medical services, that would be um, prescriptions, labs, um, specialists. So anything that's going to fall into medical will be covered. Um, again, uh, we could spend an entire presentation talking about just the benefits that are within um, the Oregon Health Plan. Um, so our goal was to try and provide a little, a little bit of a brief overview. So what we were hoping to do next is really talk about where do people um, uh, what where do they, where you might find yourself. So some folks um, might not have um, current any health coverage right now. Um, some people may only have um, organ health plan emergency benefits, uh, or they may be on the COFA premium assistance program, uh, or over or age sixty five and beyond Medicare. So we're trying to um, help bridge that gap and see 
you know, where might you be? What steps do you need to take? Or is it going to be automatic? So we're going to try and, and work through that and help um, to cover those pieces for everyone. And again, this is where I feel like a lot of questions are going to come up. Um, and then we're not going to be able to address everything, but we're going to do the best we can, okay? So the first one we wanted to cover, of course, is for folks that may not have any active health coverage or active benefits um, at this point. Um, and they want to know, okay, great, now I qualify or, or may qualify for the Oregon Health Plan. Um, how, what do I need to do? So uh, the biggest piece that we want to encourage people is, um, is to apply. So the great thing about the Oregon Health Plan, a great thing about Medicaid and state Medicaid is that you can apply any month um, to see whether you qualify for Oregon Health Plan. Um, now, during the transition period, um, well, as Monica had mentioned, the, um, the change within our system is gonna take effect um, uh, March 10th, March 11th. It may take a little bit of time for the system to shift over, um, so we may be about mid-March before people to qualify for full Oregon Health Plan benefit. Oh, I got him. All right. And um, so what we really want to do is we want to say, if you don't have health coverage, connect with someone locally, um, you know, uh, apply online, uh, call the 1-800 the number um, and uh, be able to, to see whether you qualify. Um, for folks that uh, don't have any current active benefits and apply before March 10th, um, you may uh, receive uh, the COWN benefits um, or the uh, what's called uh, emergency only benefits until the change that happens in March 10th. So just to be aware of that, but we really wanna encourage folks to get out, apply, see what you may be eligible for. Um, and uh, there are local organizations like CAN, OMCA, NYC and NEON that are out in the community that can provide um, uh, assistance in, in, your, in your language um, and can provide the assistance and help that you need. The next group that we wanted to, to cover um, is uh, for folks that uh, may have currently have OHP emergency medical, um, which some folks may know it is also known as COWM or COWM pregnancy benefits. So when uh, many of the folks in the COVID community applied, say for um, other programs in the community like uh, the COFA Premium Assistance Program. Many of you applied to the Oregon Health Plan and may have that uh, this uh, this benefit already, the OHP Medical Emergency um, piece. So what's really important about that is that uh, close to, uh, you know, a little over 700 folks, um, roughly we're still working on getting the numbers uh, nailed down, currently have active OHP Emergency Medical benefits within the system. So what can be helpful with that is that when we go to um, provide an update in our system um, on March 10th, around mid-March, um, anybody that has that current active benefit will change automatically. So for folks that fall into this category, you won't need to do anything. Um, the system is gonna be automatic. Um, we'll of course keep people up to date on if there's any changes to that, um, but that is uh, from the assessments that we've been doing and um, looking at the processes, is that's gonna be a pretty quick shift in, um, for, for folks. Um, you will start receiving um, letters in the mail uh, indicating that you have changed to full OHP benefits for Oregon Health Plan benefits. Um, and with our outreach uh, with the community, we're gonna continue to reach out um, to folks and help them understand how to use their benefits um, for them to know what they have access to. Um, but for this particular group, um, you won't have to uh, um, have any particular changes. And, and again, we're here to help. Um, we know that there's gonna be a lot that we're going over today. There's gonna be things that we may not be able to even cover. Um, but uh, we're just hopefully trying to help provide and, and catch um, where folks may, may fall into different categories. Um, the next group that we wanted to talk about is there, there may be uh, quite a few members in the community that have the COFA Premium Assistance Program, um, as well as a private health plan. And there is going to be a little bit of transition for you guys as well. And so I was going to pass this off to uh, Nina Rempel, who um, uh, runs that program, um, to help provide a little bit of context on uh, what you uh, in the community may need to do around um, the COFA Premium Assistance Program. And Ina, are you um, are you there? I am. Can you hear me now, Sean? We can. Wonderful. Oh, we might have lost you again, Nina. Is this better? 
Yep, we can hear you now. Thank you. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties, everyone. No um, so what are the next steps for someone that has a, a private health plan? Um, and you may or may not have the COPA Premium Assistance Program because I do know that uh, there are many COPA citizens that uh, maybe couldn't um, fulfill all of the requirements for the COPA Premium Assistance Program with their immigration documents, but found uh, affordable health care um, through their agent um, using healthcare.gov and still getting their premium tax credits. Um, if you, again, do not have active emergency only uh, medical uh, CALM benefits, you will want to apply for um, the OHP Oregon Health Plan um, now or as soon as possible. Uh, that way, uh, we will be able to get you that Medicaid um, benefit if you qualify um, income wise um, or meeting other criteria. If you have had uh, enrollment in a private health plan and you get your full OHP benefits, you will need to cancel your health plan with healthcare.gov. Um, and uh, if you have been enrolled in the COPA Premium Assistance Program, uh, once we are notified that you have full coverage, we will stop paying for your premium, for your private health plan. As you'll see here on this slide, um, you cannot have full OHP um, benefits and premium tax credits at the same time. So it is important that we make sure that um, your plan gets canceled. When you receive a letter from the Oregon Health Plan confirming your full benefits, uh, please cancel your, your private health plan. And the phone number is on the screen. Um, if you're enrolled in the COVID Premium Assistance Program, again, we will stop paying your premiums once we are notified. So you will not have um, both inadvertently. Uh, you won't have um, us the COPA program paying that premium. If you don't cancel your plan with healthcare.gov, then you'll be responsible for the full premium um, to keep your private plan. Um, and then again, just remember to file your taxes to reconcile, um, which is reporting your tax credits um, that you receive from healthcare.gov. Wonderful, thank you so much, Nina. Um, in thank you, Sean. Yeah, and as you guys can tell, um, uh, you know, some of these changes came up, uh, you know, the policy change um, that allowed for the reinstatement of Medicaid benefits um, to COFA, the COFA community back in December. Um, it's been taking a while for us uh, as a C2 to look at what does that mean for everybody? Where, where for are folks going to fall? What are the changes that are need, gonna, need to happen? And that's why I know this may be can be overwhelming this information can be overwhelming um, and that's why this is our first step and our first um, bridge to connect with the community and to make sure that we are getting the information to you that you need um, and please again we'll, we're going to have our, our, our question and answer section if there's anything um, that uh, we've gone over that we need to go over again and make sure that folks um, uh, feel comfortable uh, with it as well as who you can go to to get support um, so as I had mentioned, um, so we have different groups. We have folks that are um, uh, under the age of uh, 65 that are COFA adults. Um, that um, the most important thing is that we you need to apply. You apply for coverage if you don't have it. If you have the emergency coverage, you will get uh, letters in the mail. If you're not sure of where you fall, um, you can always co uh, connect with us um, and we can help you find that out. Um, the last group that I wanted to talk about um, is for folks that are age um, 65 and older or um, have long-term care, um, sorry, long-term uh, disability. Um, there are, with the policy change that happened in December, it did open up uh, Medicaid access um, or uh, financial assistance access for other programs. Um, we're just talk about it briefly because we're still working out uh, some of the changes that are going to be happening. Uh, but one thing that we really wanted to cover for folks that can be really important is for those that have Medicare or qualify for Medicare that are age 65 and older, um, you are, uh, could be potentially eligible for Medicare savings programs, which is financial assistance that you can apply for and be eligible for um, that can help pay for things like your premiums for Medicare, 
and can help with your out-of-pocket costs. Um, there are different levels of financial assistance and different levels of what you can qualify for. So we're not going to go into huge detail, but if you fall into this grouping or they fall into this category or you're not sure, just reach out and ask. As well as long-term care services. So for folks that need um, assistance with their daily activities, um, in-home care and in-care facilities are uh, potentially available to you. So we just want to make sure that as we talk about you know, uh, Medicaid benefits um, from the Oregon Health Plan perspective for those that are um, under the age of 65, we want to make sure that everybody knows what different levels of benefits you can qualify for and what may be available to you as well. All right, um, and so our next section is going to be our questions and answer. Um, so we do have a few folks that are here on the call today that to help field any policy questions or things that may be um, a little bit more uh, uh, detailed um, that uh, I may not be um, the best subject matter expert in order to explain some of them, uh, the changes that are coming up. Um, so um, I'm going to hand uh, things off to uh, my uh, colleague Antonio, um, who's going to help to um, uh, take some of the questions that are in our chat box uh, and see if we can help get some of those answered today. And if not today, uh, we'll make sure to get the information out to you at a later date. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you, Sean, uh, for that. Um, um, again, that, that is a lot of information to digest. Um, we want to say that um, it, it, it is a lot of information, um, but um, you know, like Sean said, this isn't the first time, this isn't the only time we will have these conversations. We, we will continue having ongoing conversations. So the first question that, that was put in the, in the chat box uh, was, um, let me, uh, Sean, can you unmute your, um, um, just in case there's a question for her. So here's the first question. How will applying receiving OHP affect immigration, such as applying for US, citizens, for US citizenship? Um, does, who wants to answer that question? So how will applying and receiving OHP affect immigration such as applying for U.S. citizenship. Hi, this is your, um, with the Oregon Health Authority policy team uh, with the medical program. But I think this is something I would like to take back to confirm, but I, my understanding is that for this population, they're not eligible to apply for U.S. citizenship. But that, and so I don't think that it's, I don't, I don't think that it has an impact, but that is something I want to take back and confirm just to make sure that um, I am providing accurate information. And so once I get that, I can pass it, the information to Sean, you and Antonio, and you can share it with the rest of the group. Would that work? Yes, thank you. So- Hello, we, Antonio. Yeah, go ahead. Um, sorry, this is Joe and Lit, and I just wanted to uh, just maybe try to answer that question as well. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I, I think maybe the question uh, has come up um, in light of the, some of the past conversations around uh, public charge issues. Um, from what we know, at least from our consulate, uh, is that it doesn't affect our immigration status um, when people do sign up on uh, Medicaid and benefits. However, uh, that was um, a response that we got last, um, last time that conversation had come up. So it could be dated, but as far as we know, um, it does not affect um, that conversation. I also want to make sure that um, we appreciate uh, the differences uh, between uh, FSM citizens and the Marshall Island citizens, as well as Palau, uh, because some of those uh, COFA countries do um, allow for dual citizenship. Um, so they may have a different process and how that would affect them in their, if somebody is applying for US citizenship from uh, the Marshall Islands and from Palau, whereas for the FSM, the main, uh, uh, the difference is that uh, FSM citizens um, cannot 
uh, have dual citizenship. Uh, so that also um, makes it uh, a bit different and unique. So just wanted to uh, mention that. I think it is a good idea to follow up uh, with the policy people um, on the federal side as well to make sure that we have updated information. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for that. Um, I, I, we always um, lean on, on your knowledge and, and your words. So um, the question, so we will look at it in regards to public charge. I think the person put in the box afterwards that it was in public charge. So your, um, your firm policy will, will look at it and then uh, we, will, um, we will create a document and share it with everybody who is on this call since you all have to um, register with your with an email so we will get that to you the next question um are there any grants available to help cofa citizens transition to ohp again are there any grants available to help with cofa citizens transition to ohp um does anybody want to try to answer this um uh, th this is um, Sean. Um, I can uh, I can uh, let folks know that um, currently there is discussion uh, looking at a, how we can continue to support um, this outreach and support uh, helping to uh, get folks enrolled. Um, uh, we we don't have anything solidified. Um, I know my, my supervisor is part of um, um, Oliver is part of that discussion as well. Um, it, there are ongoing discussions to see what can we do as a state to support and make sure that people are. Uh, have sustainable ways and assistance to access benefits. So we don't have anything at the moment um, to to exactly say, um, but that is a great question, and we're going to continue to to connect with folks um, once we have more details. So, and, and and to piggyback off that question, I think I I brought this up the other day, and and Kara said, hey, that that's the bill that we helped introduce. So, um, can has helped um, introduce a bill. Um, I don't know, Kara, do you want to talk more about it? Because um, I, I really don't want to um, not say something incorrectly. Um, there's, yeah, there's no, hold on, she says something in the chat box. So she said, um, there are not currently grants for the specific purpose, but can has a bill in for the exact reason. Thanks for asking and please support the bill SB 706. It's in um, the, the, the chat box. Again, Bill SB 706 will, will, will create um, some funds for, for, this, for this process to help, to help individuals transition into OHP. Again, uh, Senate Bill 706, um, it, it, is, um, it, it was introduced, help, um, introduced by, by CAN. So, um, so that that's that bill. Um, the next question is, um, this is the bit in the weeds, and I don't know if I want to ask this question, but I'll ask it because it, it is in the weeds. But can coverage still be retroactive to March 1st or only to March 10th? And, and actually, um, retro, it, it will go retroactive to December 28th. And I know that's going to open it up for a lot more questions, but for community partners, it will go retroactive to December 28th. Hi, this is here. I just want to clarify that that March 10th day, 11th day that we have there, we pointed out that date because that's going to be the date when we're going to be able to update our system with this policy change. So that way um, all of our COFA citizens can appropriately be given the full OHP benefits and other benefits that they're eligible for. But once we put that change in, we are going to uh, uh, retroactively make their plus coverage go back to December 28, 2020. Thank you, Yer, for, for that. Um, I hope I answered it. I'm all right, but I knew you would jump in, so thank you. Um, so the next question is um, Calum to OHP transition. Do we need to request for transition? Um, I'm wondering how automatic would it be because OHP wouldn't know how, know which persons are eligible for automatic transition. And I'll let um, Monica or Sean answer this question because I know they addressed it in, in their slides. Um, in, oh, Antonio, I apologize. Would you, would you mind um, asking the question again? 
Yeah. Um, do we need to request for transition? That's from OHP to, uh, um, I mean, that, that would be from Calum to full benefits. Um, and I'm wondering how, I'm, how automatic it would be because OHP wouldn't know which people are eligible for autom automatic transition. Yeah, that's a great question. And, and I'll leave it as well to, um, uh, to, to your and, and Christy as well, if there's anything you'd like to provide. Um, that is a really good question. And, and I apologize if I went over that, that information um, quickly. Um, but for anybody that um, ha is currently in um, what are our integrated eligibility systems or a system that helps to identify um, or where you submitted an application that has identified what you may be eligible for, um, there are quite a few folks that have we have identified on the back end, um, so within our system, that currently already has active um, CALM or emergency only coverage. So um, as uh, Yurik mentioned, um, on March 10th, we're going to have a system change um, that's going to update the and allow the immigration status for folks that are COFA citizens um, for their uh, immigration status to be counted for eligibility um, for full um, Oregon Health of Blend benefits. So for anybody that already has that current emergency coverage, it's good, should change automatically. Um, again, there's always sometimes kinks and things that we need to work out, but um, that's uh, how our system is gonna be functioning. And then once that change happens, you should receive an eligibility letter that indicates that your coverage has changed. You'll start receiving letters about um, uh, uh, your uh, coordinated care organization, which is who helps to manage your medical coverage. And we'll go over that stuff into detail and in, in, in other um, avenues. Um, but uh, you're, did you want to add anything else? Or Christy, did you want anything else to that? I want to make sure I didn't um, capture that incorrectly. You actually did a very good job explaining. So good job. Um, I mean, that's essentially it. As long as we have the application and it's been documented and recorded in the, or, the one system, the integrated one system, we actually have the individuals identified with their specific COPA immigration status. And as long as we can see that they have that immigration status, they have that emergency column coverage, we can automatically make that transition over. But as Sean mentioned, I mean, the system is, you know, there's always kinks in it. And so if, if you're expecting that you should have transitioned over to OH3 Plus, you don't see a letter in the mail, then please give us a call so that way we can follow up and make sure that your that eligibility is corrected and if there's any system issues we can identify and resolve it perfect thank you Karen. hey this uh, is christy garland uh, um, i am on yours team i am also a uh, policy analyst with oha i just want to add the notice in the mail thank you year for saying that um, especially if the notice is going to be translated to so after that march 10th date i would expect that um, notices would be in the mailbox maybe a week or two after so i would i just don't expect a notice march 10th right <laughs> so just give it a little bit of time but absolutely reach out if you think um or you are working with somebody where you expect that they would receive that notice and they don't please go ahead and contact but i would wait um, a, a small amount of time to make sure you get it Thank you, Sean. Thank you, your. Thank you, Christy. Uh, Sean, can you um, stop your screen sharing? It's been requested that you stop the screen sharing so um, people can. Um, we'll see everybody. Yeah. That, so, so I'm just. Uh, I'm just telling you the who request. Want, who wants that? No, of course not. Like <laughs> okay. So the next question uh, falls along the same lines. Do you know what the OHP effective dates will be once the automatic transition takes place? for active CALM recipients. Will the first of the month logic apply, for example, trans or for example, trans transition occurs March 10th or mid-March, so mm -hmm. would the OHP effective date show as March 1st or April 1st? Thank you. And, and I think we answered that. Um, it, it, it will go back to um, retroactive to December 28th, right? Um, and and along with, along, I don't know if, um, policy if you all want to add to that question or Sean uh, to that answer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thank you, Antonio. I, I might just mention something real quick to go along with that process because I, I did see a question too that came up in regards to um, folks that have a, a, say premium assistance or are on the COFA premium assistance program and might be worried about the retroactive um, that you're covered, that you'll be covered for any medical services that you need support paying for all the way back to December 28th. Um, so in uh, Nina, please correct me if I, if I uh, describe this incorrectly, but from my understanding is that once uh, someone receives an eligibility letter in the mail, the, the, um, the data which you receive at the date on the letter is the start date for what's called the dual coverage issue. So if you have both Marketplace and um, OHP, that would only start once you've received your letter. Um, so any coverage that you get retroactive coverage for, any premium assistance or any marketplace coverage you've had back to December, there shouldn't be any um, uh, issue with overlapping coverage. Um, that's why we wanna help folks in March and within the next month to, to get off of their marketplace coverage uh, and their private coverage once they know um, that they are uh, eligible at full coverage. But that should only, um, uh, it really shouldn't be an issue with overlapping um, and with any of the retroactive pieces. And Nina, uh, please let me know if you want to add any more to that or, or your, or Christy. Sorry, I got a little technical. Well, you guys are, are unmuting yourselves if you're going to reply. Um, I am not... trying. <laughs> Nina, thank I've you. Got, Go. I've got many, many things going on here. So thank you, Sean, for your explanation. So uh, that's correct. We would need to know once you have been determined. So once you, you've gotten your letter to tell you when, your, uh, when the determination, when they decided that you were eligible for full OHP, you would be able to, uh, that's when the COFA Premium Assistance Program would look to canceling your sponsorship, canceling uh, to stop paying for your premiums on your private plan at the end of the month. So if you get your notice in March that says on March 10th, you're now eligible, your premium will still be paid through the end of March. And then April is where we would stop paying your, your premiums or your private plan. So then you would have your OHP uh, benefits. And if you have not canceled your private plan with healthcare.gov, then it would appear that you would have that premium payment, um, your responsibility to the insurance company. So you might end up getting bills for two or three or more months longer telling you that you owe the full premium amount. No, uh, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean. No, go ahead, go ahead, Antonio. So, so um, another question associated with that. So, so what I'm hearing you say pretty much if, if they get the letter in March, um, their COFA premium sponsorship program will end at the end of March. It can, can I, did I paraphrase you correctly? Yes. Okay, so that's their grace period because somebody asked if there's going to be a grace period. So, so from what Nina said, and I think I, I just paraphrased her, um, you will have to cancel your, your insurance by the end of March, your OHP premium assistance program. Well, if, once, go ahead. Once, once they receive their notice, they would actually cover it. They would actually want to cancel their health plan with healthcare.gov because the premium assistance program we pay to the insurance company based on the fact that you are receiving tax credits. Once healthcare.gov knows that you uh, qualify for full Medicaid, you're no longer eligible for that tax credit. And that's why the COPA premium assistance program would stop paying your premium. All right, thank you very much. And I think that went well. I muted myself with the next question that was in there uh, for, for Mel. Please, Mel, um, respond in the, e in the chat box if that answered your question, because I believe um, that went along with what um, Nina ha had just said. Um, so, so I think uh, we're done with, 
we'll, we'll, we're going to finish the questions. Sean, can we get back to the PowerPoint slide and go to the next? Um, well, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I noticed that there was a question from Mel um, that talked about providers. Yes. Okay. So uh, with the COPA Premium Assistance Program, some of your uh, providers, um, what you want to do is check with your current provider, your doctor, to find out if they take the Oregon Health Plan. Um, and that would tell you whether or not you would need to change doctors. If your doctor takes the Oregon Health Plan, uh, you can continue going to them even with your private plan stopping. But if they, you know, if for some reason um, they don't, they don't accept your plan, then you would uh, need to ask your, you know, Oregon Health Plan to help you find a new provider. Thank you, Nina, for, for addressing that. Um, and the letters, uh, we are hoping that they'll be in uh, different languages, not only English. And I think that's what, what what's going to take a little bit longer. So um, can we go to the next slide? I know um, I, I'm just checking the time and, and we're really um, close um, <laughs> to time. So I, I just want to go. go. Go ahead. So, um, you know, another purpose of, of this uh, of this um, discussion is to hear from you, um, you know, um, how how do we you can go to the next slide slide yep. please how do we reach your community how how do we let other people know that are not here um on this call that these changes are coming um you know i i remember back to when um we first started this um working with the kofa community it was you know david from can gave me a call, called me and said we need to do something for the Kofa community. And we we went ahead and we did an event at a church. We did like two hours, not knowing that we would get over a hundred people at that event. So that, you know, at that event we had um we had that that information. We we gave information about um Medicaid, people signed up, and then that led to um to other application events we had. We had an application event in, in Portland a few in Portland. And then the other one we had um, out with Beanie's help, we had one in the, uh, Eastern Oregon uh, uh, at a church and it was a successful event. So what, what do you all think um, will help us reach the community? Um, what will help us reach the community? So this is your opportunity to, to either, um, you can put stuff in the chat or you can, um, unmute yourself and, and go ahead and and talk but um you know outreach at your church is that something that you know one of the organizations that that is helping um uh helping do this outreach is that something that they can do at your church um facebook we know that facebook is um something that where um somebody made a, a joke that if we want to reach somebody we reach them through facebook um and the other one is, you know, do we want to start an advisory group that can can lead us and tell us, okay, um, you know, Eastern Oregon, we need, um, we think the application event went well, so maybe we do another application event. Um, what what is it that do you all think that will work for your community? Because we can sit here, um, and um, we can sit here and and throw out ideas ourselves. But you all know what works for for you. You know where the people are. Um, so so I hear. So there's a couple things here. I heard uh, in the chat box. Is it is it possible to work with school dis districts and ESDs to have community outreach services? Um, that was one of the questions. I know um, I mentioned that Salem Kaiser School District is um, their third most. Um, has a large population. Kathleen uh, Jonathan, I believe, works with the school district. So that's definitely somebody that we would go to um, for, for, um, for um, to outreach to the families. As uh, some Mel said, I'd say school outreach where you'd know that a large number of COFA families are attending the schools. That's, that's one of them. I think uh, before one of the places that I that I could do outreach was was basketball um, because I coach basketball and I coach 
and and throughout um, the years, I have coached many, many people from many children from Kofa Nations. I think I saw some of the parents on this call today. Um, I'm like, oh, I know him. Um, I coach this kid. Um, so so definitely, um, that would be another another outreach um, activity that we can do. Um, does does um, application events help? Um, do we? Do we reach the community with that? Hey, Antonio. Yeah. This is Marilyn Banta. Um, so um, I live in Salem, and I'll speak on behalf of Palauans in Salem, um, Republic of Palau here. Um, because what you're talking about as far as the application event, I wasn't aware of. So what I'd like to do is maybe um, contact you uh, in any way, shape, or form so I can um, participate uh, in those events and perhaps spread the word to uh, Palawans in Salem? Definitely. Um, oh. Yeah, because not everybody goes to church and not everybody goes to if sporting events and considering the COVID situation. Yeah, especially, um, yeah. And we tend to kind of be isolating, isolating ourselves. We don't kind of go out there. So. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Um, behind the shadows. So I'm, I'm trying to get, get them out a little bit and just at least let them know that these are the resources available if you're interested. Um, that's really my main goal is just to put the word out to them and that the information is there where they can go to, how to get to A to B, and uh, just give them that, at least that uh, uh, stepping stone so they can carry on if they have any desire or interest or need for it, if anything else. So um, oh, just so wanna put that out there. You, you know where I work. Thank um, you. I, 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 with... I do know where you work and I, I do know what, a, what employee resource groups you're a part of. So I will hunt you down. Um, when we have this information to share with the community, um, especially for for the Palauan, com Palauan community here in Salem, um, because you know we, we see um, a lot of Palauan community out, out in Eastern Oregon. That's why we were out there. Um, but but mm -hmm. I'm glad to know that there is a, a population here locally, and that you are a resource for us to get that information out. So thank you. Good. Thanks, Stu. Uh, something else that was shared in addition to social media, we have had sex success with texting outreach. Um, that, that is something also, thank you. Um, uh, it says, I work in Westland, Wilsonville that has a small but consistent population of COFA nation families. I can check in with my district administration about this. Thank you. Uh, utilize and partner with trusted leaders in various communities to share the information. Yes, thank you. I, I think this this has been, um, you know, that part is is a necessity. Um, I know we work with Beanie on in Eastern Oregon. I remember the first outreach event. She was literally running and picking people up and bringing them to the church so they could sign up for Oregon Health Plan. So, um, you know. And now Marilyn's going to be a resource for me in this community. Kathleen, um, you know, Joe, David. Um, so I know you all and I know how to get a hold of you. So you will be hearing from, from our team uh, when we're having some of these events in the community. And also, um, hey, I, I didn't say hunt you down, but sorry. Yes. Thank you for that. I, I I, I apologize. Um, thank you. I, um, um, so, so yeah. So, um, thank you for those. So, school outreach, trust, a partner with community uh, organizations. Um, people will check with the school districts. Um, thank you. School outreach. Um, anything. Uh, um, anything about um, application events anybody wants to share? Do those work, don't work? What do you all think? Antonio, um, am I muted? No, you're not muted. Okay. okay. I have two of my uh, community leaders here. Um, I have a pastor, uh, Minister Ano Alik, and uh, Ayman Tieko. 
Um, these are really good connections that we have to our communities because they have a large congregation. I know um, Pastor uh, Diego goes to the largest Marshallese church here. So, I mean, we, we've built our network through our churches because in our culture, the church, the people that go to these churches, which is majority, 90% of the Marshallese population, they will never come to government events like this. The church-based organizations are a faith-based, but I'm so glad that they were able to make it. Um, and um, uh, Pastor Tieko is also one of our board members. So I would, is it okay if I give them like a minute each to talk about how we can reach them? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Pastor Ano and Pastor Tiego, do you guys have a, you guys have a few things to say? Really, Ano? Okay. Yeah, they should be able to unmute themselves as well. Really, Ano, le cubrigo yo? Yeah. Okay. Really, Aymon, cubrigo yo? Well, I do apologize. If, if they get come back on, um, I would love to hear from them and, and how we can connect with the, uh, the members. Thank you um, for that. Uh, Carmen, go ahead and ask that question. Um, um, Carmen, go ahead and unmute yourself. And Nina, you have a very, um, you know, legit question. Can you responsibly hold in-person enrollment events during the current COVID restrictions? Um, you know, that you raise a, a good point. You know, how, how would that be done? And, and we would have to, um, you know, do it strategically and do it in a way that is, um, is you know, distancing and, and all of that. So you bring up a good point. I'm not saying um, that would be, um, you know, the best thing to do, but um, yeah, um, thank you. Um, uh, Carmen, did you have something? Um, all right. So we are going to move ahead because we got like four minutes and Thank you, Antonio. Uh, I can go ahead and, and, and take over if you'd like. Yes, please do. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much for Antonio. Um, and thank you, um, folks. I know it can be tough uh, in the in the moment to um, uh, be asked to, to provide input and feedback. So Again, this is why you know we're we're here. This is our our stage one. This is our step one. Uh, we want to be um, connected with the community. We want to be upfront and open um, with the changes that are coming. And how can we work together with you? How can we reach um, the 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 community that hasn't had health coverage in a while potentially? Uh, you know, especially with COVID, especially with the pandemic, um, we really want to help improve that that access, that equitable access to health coverage, that equitable access to um, improvement of um, uh, outcomes in, in, in people's lives. So, you know, this is really just our stage one. I appreciate folks sticking through um, with, I know we had some of our, some uh, technical issues and just um, if you have uh, those community leaders that you're able to get input from them at a later time and bring it to us, please do. Um, I think, you know, we're going to continue to talk about uh, in some form of advisory group where we can continue to meet with community leaders and see how's the process going. Um, so, you know, we wanted to kind of summarize and talk, what is our next step for community outreach? So we're going to gather all the input from the uh, event today. Um, we're going to work together with um, uh, organizations and, and leaders that, that speak for the community um, and help to plan outreach and set goals. What can we do safely during COVID? Um, what type of, what does that outreach look like? Um, I know that a lot of COFA members um, need or, or prefer to get assistance in person. So how can we safely make that happen? What does that look like? Um, and we're going to try and work uh, and communicate effectively. We're going to continue to check in with the community. And so this is just event one. Um, we had to work really quickly to get this put together because um, we wanted to make sure that we started 
connecting with the community now and telling you and informing you about the changes that were coming up. Um, I know a lot of states are going to be doing similar stuff. And so this is our, our hope uh, in, as Oregon and as the state to, to connect and to um, help uh, start that conversation because it's going to be an ongoing one and people are going to continue to need support in the community. Um, so if you do have any additional thoughts, questions, how did the event go today? Um, you know, please, please feel free to to email myself, Antonio, Monica. Um, we are, uh, we what we love input. We want to make sure that we're doing this stuff in an effective way and that we're connecting with people. Um, so um, I just want to uh, thank everybody for being here. Um, the last reminder I have for the community um, is just to to remember you have allies out there. You have advocates, folks that you've been going to uh, for a long time. We want to make sure you have connect, uh, connect resources, their phone numbers. Um, we're going to be sending this presentation out. Um, we're going to work on uh, collecting the responses and hopefully we'll have it out uh, next week. Um, uh, but again, reach out to us. Don't hesitate to call. Don't hesitate to find out what you qualify for and find out um, what support you might need. Okay. Um, and that. Oh, uh, oh sorry. Yeah. So we, we have a, a community member with their hands up. Oh, yeah. um, can, yeah. we, can we have her um, maybe kind of maybe close it out? Um, but but um, Beanie, go ahead. I, I see that you have your hand up. Can you please um, unmute yourself and let us know what you got to say? Hi, you had to call me out, huh? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You raised your hand. I didn't call you out. You raised your hand. Oh, I know. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, hey, one, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for bringing all of us together. And I'm so grateful for the partnership. And uh, that really has evolved into friendships and, and, and collaborations. And so thank you so much. Um, I do have two comments. One is... Um, for some of the questions that may have been asked um, later on, could we um, follow up on those questions um, and, and would we be able to get some responses from them? And then the next one is just to let you know that the CAN phone number is actually 541-786-8444. Oh, and Kara just put it in the chat box. But again, thank you. thank you so much. And I really appreciate this space and um, your willingness to take time out of your busy schedule to um, accommodate us and help us better understand how to transition. Thank you so much, Benny. Um, and it, I'm glad you caught that and I'm glad Kara did as well. Um, I think uh, that's uh, had some wonderful um, statements there and I, you know, again, this is our stage one, this is our step one, um, and we're going to continue to communicate, continue to to reach out and make sure that you guys have the resource that you need and that we're answering the questions that you have. Um, so we're going to continue that process. Um, and again, thank everyone for being here. Thank you, Antonio and Monica. Um, I think you can and OMCA. Um, I really appreciate all the hard work everyone has put in, um, and I know there's a million people that aren't on this call even right now that helped make this happen today. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, and again, you know, please reach out if you have questions. Let us know, uh, and we'll continue to to make this a, a community effort. Okay. All right. Wonderful. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and and, uh, and, and Tony, do you want to go ahead and um, pause the uh, uh, recording and, and sign out, or would you like to do? Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your um, afternoon uh, sharing a, a few hours with us. Um, we, we are we are glad that we were able to share this this information with you, and, and know that there, there's more to come. And um, we we will be reaching out to some of the leaders um, and and whoever else emails us and say they want to be part of it to to have these conversations. And I know some people said that. Um, that they they weren't able to give replies, but they will email us. So thank you. I will stop recording now, and um, definitely we'll we'll share um, these things for you. Thank you, everyone.